Okay, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at some of the string functions that are built into MySQL, and there are about 30, and, but some of them are repetitive, all right, and I'm not going to go through all 30, but I'll go through some of the common things that people like to do with the string manipulations. Okay, I am going to be using the sample database Sakilla, and if you don't have that installed, I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video so you can go out and get it. And I'm going to start by using that database. And then probably the most common thing people want to do is to combine columns. So we're going to select, and then the function is concat for concatenate. And then we just present a comma separated list of the things that we want to combine. Now we can combine them with things like spaces or other strings. So in this case, I'm going to use a dash and we're going to show the title and the rating of movies in the film table. Okay, so there they are. And, and we can see that, oh, it sort of has an ugly title here. So we're going to change that. And uh, we're going to change that by adding the keyword as, and we're going to give it an alias. All right. And I'll just call it title and rating. Okay, so you get something a little cleaner than that ugly expression in your result set. Okay, a lot of times people want to see how to format things as currency, and so we'll see an example of that. So I'm going to select, and once again I'm going to use concat to do this, and I'm going to concatenate the dollar sign on, and then again from this film table I'm going to get the rental rate. All right, and it's probably a little more useful if I also put the title there. All right, we'll give it an alias, and as long as I don't use more than one word, I don't need to use the quotation marks. Okay, so let's take a look at that, and there it is with our dollar sign concatenated in. If we want a space between them, then we can just add that as part of the string. Okay, something that's not so easy to do is to add the comma separator into large numbers, or it doesn't seem like it would be easy to do. It actually is. There's a function that we can add, and for this one, I'll just make up a number. All right, and the function is though format, and format takes a number, and here I'll just make it suitably big, and then uh, it requires a number of decimal places that you want to format it as. And then when I run that, we get our comma separated values, all right? And then, you know, if we want to give it a, an alias, maybe this is our nest egg, okay? And then, yep, we can combine it with concat as we did before and put the dollar sign in front of it. Okay. Okay, another thing people like to do is to format as a percent. And I should also note here as I'm adding these strings onto numbers and things like that, once I do that, I turn it into a string. So I'm not going to be able to do any more math on that value. So any math you want to do, you're going to have to do before you add your dollar sign or your percent sign or whatever it is you're trying to do. Okay, so for percent, we'll do it this way. We will get our rental rate. All right, and I'm going to divide it by the replacement cost column. Okay, and it's going to be from the film table again. Let's just take a look at what it looks like before we do anything. Spelled that wrong, so we got an error, but there's the proportion of rental rate to replacement cost. Now to get a percentage, I'm going to want to you know, multiply this by 100. Okay, so there's our percentage without the percent sign. All right, and then with a little bit more precision than we probably need, so we'll round it and uh, we'll give it one decimal place. Okay, and now all we have to do is add the percentage sign on there, so I'm going to use concat to do that. And I will just add a string to the end of it. Okay, and then, yeah, we definitely want an alias here. Okay, another thing we might want to do is to replace a instance of a string or even spaces with something else. All right, a single character it could be, uh, a whole word, and uh, that's what I'll do here. So I'll select description, all right, and we're going to get it from that film table. All right, and if I look down through here far enough, right, I see that, oh, uh, this is an epic drama of a feminist and a mad scientist, all right, and uh, what I'm going to do here instead is I'm going to use replace, all right, in the description. All right, and this is one of the few places that SQL is case sensitive. All right, so if I want to replace an and with an uppercase A, I'm going to have to specify that. And uh, in this case, I'm going to replace it with an or. We'll run that. All right, and there we have our right, epic drama feminist or a mad scientist. And if we go through, we'll see that any place where 
and appeared is now replaced with an or. Okay, we can use this uh, to get some other sort of basic text analytics if we want. All right, so I'll start by figuring out the length of a description. So I'll use the length function here and it'll be description. All right, and it'll be from film. All right, and then we get in characters how long uh, each description is. All right, that includes all characters, all right, so with spaces. All right, so if we want to do something like determine how many words are in the description, we can start with the length. Okay, and then we're going to subtract away from this another length, and this length is going to be the description where we replace the spaces, all right, with just an empty string. All right, so in other words, what we're going to see here is the entire length of the description. All right, and uh, we're going to subtract away from that the length of the description without spaces. And this is going to give us almost the number of words in each description. Okay, so we'll run that and uh, we can see that we get, okay, the difference here, the description with and without spaces. All right, so 18 and then uh, it just doesn't account for the last word, so I'll add one to it, and then, you know, we'll give it an alias. Okay, and uh, let's add a couple of columns just so we can get something more meaningful. And then we'll just confirm that we're actually getting the word count. And uh, we'll run that. Okay, so there it is. And uh, I'll just spread things out a little bit here. All right, and so according, if I can spread things out enough here, according to this first one, I should have 19 words. If I can make it wide enough. Okay, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. And that does correspond to what we calculated for word count. Okay, so rough text analytics. If we needed to, we could export this to a CSV file or, or, or other, other type of file, text file, and do further analysis on it. Okay, and then we can also, you know, take this a step farther. And uh, once we get all of the word counts, all right, we can get rid of the stuff we don't need here and get an average. Okay, so essentially we have taken a text value and turn it into a numerical value. Okay, some other common things you might want to do is find some substring. So, for example, if we had a table and it was storing email addresses. Okay, and uh, we'll give it an alias. Uh, we might want to peel off or at least find the at symbol in there. All right, and then if we have the at symbol, then we might want to do something with the beginning or the end. All right, so first we would need to find where that at symbol occurs. And to do this, I'm going to use the in string function. All right, and there's a couple of other functions that do the same thing. All right, and then we're going to pass in that string. And then we're going to look for whatever substring we want. Okay, so we run that and what it gives us is an integer and it tells us it occurs at the fifth position. All right, so with that we can combine it with another text function just to get that uh, beginning part of the email address. So I'm going to start with this. All right, and then I'm going to combine it with the left function. Okay, so left will peel off a certain number of characters in a string starting on the left. And here we're telling it to peel them all off until it finds uh, that at symbol. All right, and then I'll just close the left and let's see what that does. And it almost works, right? It gives us all five of those characters. All right, so to eliminate the at, we'll just subtract one. Okay, and uh, there it is. Okay, another common thing people like to do is to remove excess spaces. So if we had something like this string, all right, and it had a whole bunch of excess spaces on it, when I 
run my queries, or it's not so obvious on the right, but on the left we can see, okay, it's not aligned on the left, it's because it has these extra spaces. A lot of times that can cause problems, depending on what you're gonna do. All right, so I would copy this, and I will use, there are three functions. I can use trim, and uh, trim gets rid of left and right spaces. All right, and if you're only interested in the spaces on the left, you can L trim it. And if you're only interested in spaces on the right, you can R trim it. All right, so I'll just trim it to show you what we get. All right, and there's our, our uh, new string, and we can see the spaces are, are split off. Again, we can't really tell it on the right, but if I run length on this, all right, it will include all those spaces. All right, and there's 25. If I run length on this, there's only 16 and then you know if I want to do an L trim we'll end up with a longer string and if I want to do an R trim we should end up with a slightly different length. Okay so hopefully that helps you get started using the text functions that are built into MySQL and once again I am including a link to the reference for all of the text functions uh, here at the top.